Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with a follow-up show on inflammation and really easy ways that you can use in your daily diet in order to dramatically reduce inflammation that may be showing up as brain fog or skin rashes or migraines or allergies or asthma or even autoimmune issues that have to do with inflammation around certain organs like the thyroid uh, or even joint pain, et cetera. So what I want to share with you is that, again, a lot of the inflammation that we have in our body, it can come from other factors. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Immune-based, like viral-based, heavy metals, et cetera, gut-based. Um, but a lot of it is nutritional-induced or diet-induced. And that dietary, those dietary factors actually then lead to genetic predispositions. So what I want to share with you, again, this is going back, I will uh, link up the previous podcast where I just did uh, an inflammatory case study, basically a client's lab, obviously everything's redacted, um, showing you what happens when the diet is a little out of sync, even if you think you're eating well, and, uh, and then how to mitigate that through just I think simple nutritional choices. So what I'm going to do is I will link up the previous podcast as well as this video and any helpful handouts, as well as the three big takeaways for the show at stephencabral.com forward slash 2531. All right, so let's get started. So this first graph, um, I always like to be fair and unbiased. And so when we're trying to look at overall omega-3s to omega-6s, let's think of it like this. Omega-3s are largely anti-inflammatory. They can come from cold water fish, such as tuna or salmon or mackerel or sardines or anchovies or trout. Uh, you have to be careful with some of the ones like tuna that are higher in mercury, but um, those are much higher in omega-3s. Some seeds like chia seeds and flax seeds uh, are as well, and walnuts for a nut are higher in omega-3s. Walnuts, though, because again, being fair, and flax seeds and chia seeds, they don't convert all that well. So they start off as um, that A, you see there, alpha linolenic acid, linolenic acid, and those just don't convert as well to EPA and DHA, which you're trying to get more of, because that leads to anti-inflammatory. So anti-inflammatory, think about all the different symptoms I named at the beginning, the brain fog, the migraines, the allergies, the asthma, the joint pain, the uh, immune-based issues, et cetera. Uh, all of that are, can be from higher levels of what are called inflammatory uh, eicosanoids, and you can see those at the bottom. So the thing is, though, flaxseed converts at about 14% to EPA. So you, again, you have to eat a whole lot of flaxseed to get there. Um, chia seeds is even less, somewhere around 6%. It's not like they're bad for you. It's just the conversion's not great, and walnut varies depending on uh, that source of the omegas. Now, the other part about the fish is that they have to be wild. If they're not wild, they're not going to have that high level of omega-3s. So you want to look for wild caught fish when you are looking for those high omega-3s. And um, ideally, you want to get the skin with it, which is where the greater amount of omega-3s are. Now, of course, you can use uh, a good quality, mercury-free, no metal uh, daily omega-3 support as well to get your omega-3s. Uh, but anyway, this is, how the ch this is how the chart flows. I'm going to show you in a minute all the cofactors that you need today. Um, and then I also wanted to share with you, it's not just animal fat that leads to high levels of omega-6s, okay? It's um, fried food, it's seed oils, those types of things are higher in uh, inflammatory polyunsaturated fats. And um, some saturated fat, uh, well, all saturated fats, does and can have higher levels of arachidonic acid. But again, that varies. If you're going with a grass-fed beef, if you're going with a pastured chicken or pastured eggs, they will, especially eggs, have higher levels of arachidonic acid, um, but you'll also have some omega-3s to help hopefully balance those out as well. Okay, so at the end of the day, and I'll link up this podcast uh, and, and video just like this one, you're looking for about a three-to-one ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. So yes, you actually do need... Um, slightly more omega-6s to omega-3s. You can have a one-to-one -one ratio. Most people will never get below a three-to-one. Um, but what we strive for is a three-to-one omega-6 to omega-3 profile in our practice. Very, very achievable. And uh, at the same time, what's called a total omega-3 saturation rate in the blood of about 9%. That has been correlated with less uh, heart disease and many other inflammatory factors. All right, so this is how the chart flows. 
EPA and DHA are anti-inflammatory omega-3s you want, and you want to stay away from as much arachidonic acid. Some, fine. A lot, not good. It leads to these, which are called prostaglandins, and uh, we want less of those anti-inflammatory-based fats. All right, so next up, I said on my last show that I would share with you, it's not just about the omega-3s and omega-6s you take in your diet, and here's why. Here's the omega-3s, same chart as above, just looks a little different, it's a little bit more in depth. And you can see here the alpha linolenic acid. This is from your flax seeds, and it's from your um, walnuts and your chia seeds, etc. We're moving down to steridonic acid, we move all the way down to EPA, okay? And we move down to DPA, right? Then you can see the back and flow chart here, you can move back and forth from DHA to EPA. I will tell you from lab testing that a supplement that has a two or greater to one EPA to DHA works much, much better at balancing your levels because it seems much easier for the body to convert EPA to DHA than it does for DHA to convert to EPA, and I've done thousands and thousands of labs. And so I used to just use a one-to-one -one ratio of EPA to DHA, Sorry, DHA is right here. Um, you have to go through two processes. And I found that it's just much easier to uh, give someone more EPA and then it easily flows downhill towards DHA, okay? But you can see both of these are anti-inflammatory, right? Anti-inflammatory eicosanoids, and then these are the inflammatory ones, okay? So again, we have linoleic acid. We've got uh, down here GLA, which is actually can be anti-inflammatory, believe it or not. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then we've got arachidonic acid, which again is inflammatory, okay? You've got your eggs, you've got your meat, you've got your grains, you've got your vegetable oils, some nuts, grains, and seeds. Again, some of these have omega-3s in them, so we can't get mad at the beneficial versions. But... What happens when you're getting in these, but you're still inflamed, right? You're getting in your omega-3s, you're reducing your omega-6s, but you're still feeling inflamed, okay? There are, again, I always talk about this, especially inside of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, that there are levels to this. There are layers to the onion. So people are saying, just take your omega-3s. I get it, and I agree, and you should. Honestly, most people should, but what people often overlook are that there are steps needed with your body. This is what we talk about as you age, there are deficiencies, right? So I talk about how dis-ease sets into the body. There are deficiencies as we get older and there are toxicities. Deficiencies, so we go down on those. Toxicities, we gain more of. And we'll talk about toxicities in the last slide here today. So your deficiencies can be your B vitamins, your antioxidants, et cetera, right? Well, look at this. If we wanna move from a linoleic acid, alpha linoleic acid, eventually down to EPA, what do we need? Vitamin B2, vitamin B3, niacin, right? Vitamin B6, paradoxal 5-phosphate, Mg, magnesium, vitamin C, zinc, and we need proper level functioning of insulin. So not, not super high levels of insulin or low uh, to maintain balanced blood sugar. And then you just see desaturase here, the alpha-6 desaturase. These are just enzymes that are being used along the way as well. Um, so again, why is this important? Because both of these factors lead to the breakdown of these nutrients to actually make them usable by the body. So your body can't just use omega-3s all by themselves without having your B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin C, zinc, and insulin, right? Okay, so what about the next step? B3, B5, B6, biotin, which is actually in the B vitamin family, vitamin C. Okay, next step to get to EPA, B2, B3, B6, magnesium, vitamin C, zinc, insulin. All right, what about from EPA to make it down to DHA? More B3, more B5, more B6, more biotin, and more vitamin C. Okay, why do I bring this up? Because oftentimes people are using a single supplement as they would a pharmaceutical drug. That's what, that's what uh, conventional medicine does. So conventional medicine said, oh no, we don't believe in nutritional supplements. Um, they don't do anything. They're just, you know, create expensive urine. That was like the joke like 10, 15, 20 years ago. Okay, you know, we, we get it. Like everything has to be a pharmaceutical drug, right? So they can be patented so that these companies can make trillions of dollars. Okay, so that, that's the game, got it. All right, so here's the thing though. We know 
beyond a shadow of a doubt that every single vitamin and nutrient in the body works and that it's needed by the body. So then we start to pile hundreds and then thousands and then 10,000 studies on all these new different nutritional supplements. So then pharmaceutical companies and doctors are like, oh, okay, yeah, maybe there is something to this. What do they do? They create then a pharmaceutical form of this. They have now an omega-3 that you can get a prescription for. Okay, first of all, a prescription for these things are going to be the most synthetic, poor forms that there are, right? When you go with natural health, you also understand that you don't want the mega doses. So again, when conventional medicine gives vitamin D, what do they do? They give 50,000 IUs because they don't believe that people can be responsible enough to take it on a daily basis. So they say, hey, just take this once a week or take 300,000 once a month. We know that that's not how the human body works. And that's why when you do studies on vitamin D, even if it's vitamin D3, and you give it at 100,000 IUs, it can cause hypercalcemia in the blood. Right, you pull calcium into your blood, then it could end up hardening their arteries. We don't want that, right? What do we do? Well, what would you get in nature? A couple thousand, 10,000 IUs a day maximum, right, from the sun. So what do we do? Two to 4,000 IUs per day for most adults, right? 500 to 1,000 for most children, right? So like, you have to understand is that that's not what we do in natural health. The other thing is this. We know that the human body does not work by single nutrients. It works as a whole. And as I'm showing you here today is that even if you take your omega-3s, you still need your B vitamins. You still need magnesium. You still need antioxidants like vitamin C. You need zinc. You need balanced blood sugar, and biotin also helps with that as well. So then should you just find a B2 vitamin? Should you just find a B3 vitamin? Should you just find a B6? No. Use something like the daily nutritional support or daily activated multivitamin or the activated B complex in order to get all of your B vitamins. And again, you can use any brand you want in the world. I formulate for Equalife. You can use any brand that you believe is a trusted source that's a functional medicine formula. So when you look at, you know, when you look at, let's just say B6, it's a P5P, right? It's a paradoxal 5 phosphate. And magnesium is a, not a magnesium oxide. So here's what I want you to do though is, is the, the lesson is, the goal is, that your body needs all of the vitamins and minerals to work together. Now, I know that I'm showing you B2, B3, B6, magnesium, vitamin C, biotin, zinc. Okay, so yes, all that's important. But we have to understand is that we're just talking about one pathway for omega-3s, right? What about for liver detoxification or methylation? Oh, well, now we need vitamin B9, folate, right? We need vitamin B12, methylcobalamin methylcobalamin. That's why you want to get all of your vitamins and minerals on a daily basis. But you can start to see that if a medical doctor, which they sometimes do, just prescribes or recommends an omega-3, it may not be as helpful because you need these cofactors. So I don't want to get too deep in the weeds, but believe it or not, if you have these cofactors, it actually allows you to take in more omega-6s and there's a step that's missing on this chart is from DGLA. Um, GLA can actually become an anti-inflammatory prostaglandin uh, if you have enough of these cofactors. Now, you can't still overdo the arachidonic acid, but if you take in this linoleic acid from some nuts and seeds, it actually doesn't necessarily get converted to arachidonic acid if you have enough of these cofactors. So I find that really interesting. And I wanted to share that with you as well. All right, one more step. We've got one more chart. Hopefully this is helpful. Is that uh, now we've got switch, right? Omega-6 is on this side, omega-3 is on this side. It's all exactly the same. They're flowing down to GLA. We want more of that, right? Even in primrose oil, black currant. We don't have to supplement with those. Very, very infrequently do we, do we do that in our practice uh, because you can get them from other things. Um, but you get your EPA, you've got your DHA. Why am I showing you this chart? Because of this down right down here. Alcohol, so drinking alcohol, Smoking in general, eating trans fats and certain drugs prevents these steps, which I just showed you here, from actually transforming into the usable omega-3s. So it inhibits the enzymes that transforms them. So if you don't have these B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin C, zinc, biotin, insulin, etc., the desaturase, the elongase, the desaturase, the elongase, right? The desaturase, you're not, those enzymes aren't going to work. And so that is why when you drink alcohol and smoke, you eat fried foods or too much, again, inflammatory animal fats, it's a, it is a thing, right? And a lot of oils, especially seed oils or pastries or margarine, right? Desserts, those types of things with high omega-6s, you actually block these enzymes 
from working. Because you're creating massive oxidation in the body, you're using up a lot of these vitamin C, antioxidants, zincs, etc., and you're not able then to get those omega threes to flow. So I wanted to, wanted to show you here today. These are the toxicities, right? I teach this in IHP. I try to always share with you. I know it seems simplified, but we get sick because of deficiencies, right? These items or toxicities, which are the poor diet. Uh, the alcohol, the tobacco, the toxins from the environment, certain drugs, right? So what I want to share with you is that when you reduce your toxicity and you improve your deficiencies, you supplement or eat the good foods that you need, your body has no choice but to begin to get well. And that's always the message that I like to share with people. So hopefully this was helpful here today uh, for previous podcasts and case studies on this omega-3s, as well as how to actually test your omega-3 scores. You can, in your inflammation score, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2531. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day.